You're so lucky because I'm currently steaming recurves into my super cool paleolithic ball or mesolithic. It's not split hairs here. And I've got about five more minutes. So that's as long as this video can be. And it's a response to a question I had. Do I have any hint or tips or hints, tips or tricks in laying out a bow? Well, I have to say that there are so many ways to lay out a bow and make a good bow that my only real tip would be work precisely. I'm a big fan of making templates out of stuff. Um, whether it's quarter inch plywood, I've got a bunch of them, or thin strips of wood that have, uh, say, shapes for the faces of bows. And you can move them, slide them, slide them around. I've got one, let's say it's 33 inches long. I can start where the handle is and then scoot it along a little bit and turn it into a 36 inch or a 40 inch if I wanted. 10 foot long by just scooting that along. If it's a snaky bow, you don't have to take your straight template and just go from the handle to the tip. You can maneuver it around the snakes. You know, So that would be it. Just work precisely. You don't want to have an intended parallel limb and then suddenly you went too far in, so you have to like narrow it. Just work precisely, that's it. Now as far as laying out a bow, I've got a handy tip here that's thousands of years old that I made up. Work that one out. <clears throat> and so I have, this is actually one of those sugar maple. Sugar maple. If I said I had maple, it would be almost meaningless because the difference between hard maple or sugar maple and silver maple or Norway maple or something like that is tremendous. It would be the difference between different wood types. Elms. I've heard people in forums say elm is a soft wood. Well, that's that's meaningless. Are you talking about red elm or slippery elm? Same thing. Um, or are you talking about rock elm? Within a genus there is a lot of variation. So anyway, look how round this was. This is exactly half of that section of the sucker. This is a sucker from a big tree. So I did not involve myself in tree murder. <laughs> Just, yeah, it is what it is. See how crown that would be if I made a bow that was any more than like an inch and a half wide? How can I make a two and a half inch wide bow out of this without having a major issue with crowning? What about this? Oh. What is stopping us from having, this is the back. You split it or you cut it, you figure it out. You, you scrape it down so you get straight lines through here so you're not violating any fibers. And you're using that center as a guide so you're not having, picture this. You've got fibers running this way, that plane, and also this way, and so you can have straight lines but still have violations of fibers, but why not? Thousands of years ago, they were using this for the bow's back. They weren't following a growth ring. Pish posh, they said. I like using that, pish posh. But anyway, I could, I could uh, fix this because it's not perfectly split down here, a little scraping. I would probably round it a little bit, keeping those parallel lines, and I could have a really wide bow from this small tree. I'm not decrowning it. Why work from this side and potentially have knots and pinholes? Pinhole knots to worry about. Whereas, look at this. I have one knot and somehow it worked out. It is exactly dead center and I can avoid that with a narrowed handle section, which this would give me enough thickness to make sure it doesn't bend. And so that is my tip. It looks like I've got um, less than a minute to go or something. Let's call it quits. But yeah, think about this. Using this as the bag. Thumbs up on that idea. Thanks, whoever came up with that thousands of years ago.